Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and today we're going to talk about an entity that I really like. I only see it every once in a while, but it's always a, a joy to see it because it's benign and it's really pretty. And by looking at this uh, picture right here, you might not be real excited about this lesion because it doesn't look very pretty from low power. It looks kind of bland and nonspecific. What you see is um, uh, adipose tissue, the white spaces here, mature fat, and kind of uh, mixed uh, in with that is some dense um, fibrocollagenous tissue, dense collagen with uh, relatively little um, cells, a kind of hypocellular dense pink collagen. And this collagenous tissue is, um, is not forming a well-defined uh, mass, but instead it's kind of irregularly mixed in with the background fat. There's a few blood vessels in there, and again you can kind of see islands of fat kind of um, mixed up in the middle of this dense collagenous stuff. So uh, at first glance you might think is this scar or reactive fibrosis or something, it doesn't really look very exciting. But the key is looking a little bit closer. The spindle cells here are just bland, benign fibroblasts. They don't look very exciting. But this is a lesion where the cells are not the important thing, it's actually the background. So in between, we have these bundles of dense pink collagen, but in between the collagen, we have another type of fiber in the background. See those red dots? Let's see if we can get them to show up better. If you flip your condenser, sometimes you can get structures that are refractile to show up really nicely. They look like beautiful little flowers, and what these are are irregular um, elastic fibers. They're really large and kind of bunched up, and if you cut them in cross-section, they look like little, uh, uh, little daisies or little flowers with little petals around the side. And if you cut them longitudinally, you can see that they look like um, little uh, beads on a string or a little caterpillars. I've heard lots of different terminology to refer to these. So this is called an elastofibroma or elastofibroma dorsi. And the, uh, this is a really unique lesion because it occurs almost always in one place on the body. And that's at the inferior tip of the scapula. And this usually occurs in adult women, usually over the age of 50. And it's almost always at the, the tip, the inferior tip of the scapula. And it occurs underneath, deep to the scapula, kind of between the scapula and the underlying rib cage. And it occurs in the, in the muscle or the, the connective tissue down there between the scapula and the rib cage. It sometimes can even be bilateral, can be present on both of the inferior scapula tips. And um, the, the thought is that this is probably due to repetitive uh, motion of the scapula against the rib cage over time and maybe is uh, related to um, uh, repetitive motion injury and chronic kind of wear and tear. So this, I think these are probably reactive lesions rather than real tumors. There may be some research on that out there, I'm not sure, but I suspect that these are just an unusual reactive process. And they've been rarely reported in other sites in the body, although I think I've never seen one um, outside of the um, scapular region personally. But they're really beautiful because of these cool little petal-shaped um, really prominent bundles of elastic uh, fiber that are, that are numerous and abundant in the background of the lesion. And so let's go back to lower power again. This area is really nice, but in some other areas, uh, the elastic fibers don't stand out quite as, quite as clearly. So you have to kind of uh, suspect it. So the site, of course, is very helpful, knowing that you're uh, in a mass underneath the scapula. And a lot of times, uh, these don't even get biopsied because surgeons, um, orthopedic surgeons who are familiar with uh, lesions like this, will recognize from imaging or from the clinical history that, that uh, mass in that region is most likely going to be an elastofibroma if it's an ill-defined mass on imaging right underneath the tip of the scapula. And see, let's look, let's flip the condenser here. So you can see the uh, the little bundles are here. They're just not quite as dramatic as that other area. And you can see uh, that these kind of have more of that uh, caterpillar-like shape if you have a good imagination. Oh, sorry, let's get it in focus here. Oh, now I've lost it on high power. Oh, there it is. 
so you can kind of see those little bundles uh, there. And uh, a lot of times you can just make this diagnosis on H&E, but if you want to see something really beautiful, you can do an elastin stain, a, a Virhoff von Giesen VVG elastin stain, which will turn these uh, elastic fibers uh, black and make them very beautiful in uh, standing out against the background. And again, from low power, You have to remember that this it really doesn't look like much. It just looks like a bunch of dense collagenous tissue mixed in irregularly with adipose tissue. Uh, one other thing, or maybe two other things that can kind of look like this would, uh, from low power would be Gardner fibroma or nuchal type fibroma, both of which are also just hypocellular, really dense collagen, just look pale pink like this, and they may have a little fat trapping. They're not usually so, um, infiltrative appearing, like this is mixed all together with the fat. A Gardner fibroma or nuchal type fibroma really look more like a solitary nodule. I'll have to do another video on those one day to show you, but at high power they will not have these elastic bundles. And now let me show another example here. And here's another case, and again it looks just like the previous case. Dense collagen, mixed in with um, mature adipose tissue. Some blood vessels in there too. And here, depending on uh, the, the exact mixture of your H&E stain, uh, sometimes the, the elastic bundles, the elastic fibers stand out really beautifully and sometimes they're a little more subtle and hard to see. And here they've, they've got a nice uh, dark, deep pink color. And again, flipping the condenser really shows those elastic, um, those beautiful uh, flower-shaped elastic fibers much better. So elastofibroma dorsi, uh, real treat when you get to see these. So here is a really nice example of the VVG Virhoff von Giesen elastic stain. And you can just see this amazing, beautiful, caterpillar bodies, if you like, or, or caterpillar or beads on a string pattern of, um, of bunched up elastic fibers in this elastofibroma. And again, in longitudinal section, they have this kind of fuzzy caterpillar-like look. Um, and if you cut them in cross section, as you can see over here, they look kind of uh, more like uh, little flowers or little uh, starbursts or fireworks or something like that, depending on what visual cue you like. But uh, it's just a fantastically uh, beautiful entity, I think, and definitely one of my favorite things to see. And fortunately, it's benign for the patient.